most important story of the decade. Actually, it was the AP News Writers Association voted Chippewa Treaty Rights the most important story between 1980 and 1990. It was a media circus. Part of it involved the nature of news itself, which is very deadline-oriented. Reporters have to take shortcuts. Many of the news operations that covered treaty rights were you know, three to seven person operations. You got your story assignment at nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, and you had to have a completed story by six o'clock that night. So, and that included travel time and editing and everything. So reporters take shortcuts, and for most mainstream news reporters who tend to be white, middle-class, Judeo-Christian people. Indian reservations were way outside their comfort zone. The other thing about news is that as a news reporter, you're taught to get you know, the official report. So you go to people in charge, and people in charge are you know, the governor and the secretary of the Department of Natural Resources and tribal chairs. And at that time, and I don't mean to be disparaging, but, you know, and I don't want to say our tribal chairs were, for the most part, inarticulate, but in terms of a, a television news report where a soundbite is a 10 second, entertaining, witty, quippy, nugget, our tribal leaders didn't, didn't have that skill. And why would they? Reservations, you know, are pretty isolated. I bet, you know, you didn't see news, news crews on a regular basis unless there was a crisis, right? So here we have the stays, the Stop Treaty Abuse People and the Protect American Rights and Resources who are churning out news releases. They're holding press conferences. They've got you know, glossy media materials they're distributing. The DNR is holding news conferences. And the tribes you know, really hadn't gotten up to speed yet. And when you know, news crews would descend on the reservations, you know, they'd stick the microphone in front of somebody's face and, and our tribal leaders, you know, oftentimes really struggled with that. And as a news reporter and as an Ojibwe woman, it really pained me to see the, you know, the awkwardness and the, I mean, this just not was, was not a skill that they had. And, and so the, the meaning of treaty rights, the significance of it, the history of the treaties, the culture, that wasn't being communicated. And all we were getting were these, these themes that were very sophisticatedly polished and presented to the media by the anti-treaty groups. These were unequal rights, they were race-based rights, they were opportunistic rights. They, you know, we didn't have these, these uh, you know, we never heard about this. This is just something they, this was a loophole that somebody found, you know, those, those Tribble brothers, they were just, you know, they just found this this little, you know, fine print in a government document somewhere, and and uh, and now everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. I mean, this is what the media was getting fed. Or the one frame that did come out from the the treaty support side was, you know, this is this is just racism, you know, and that was the only theme that people in America got from the Wisconsin boat landings. It was interesting, you know, a lot of the national news coverage that came out during this time was woefully incorrect. There were so many factual errors, and I, I wound up actually doing an, uh, an academic paper on it, and doing interviews with some of the reporters, the national reporters that came here, uh, Jonathan Towers from CNN, Gary Reeves from Chicago. I remember calling Gary Reeves and saying, because I was really interested in how much time they spent, they actually spent in northern Wisconsin, because the national media sort of just, you know, likes to parachute in and do a bunch of interviews and then they're out and that's it. So I, I asked Gary Reeves, you know, how, how much time did you actually spend in Wisconsin? He said, never been there. I said, what about the report you did? Oh, that was file footage that we got from WAOW in Wausau, and, and they, he basically just dragged an Indian, not an Ojibwe, 
dragged an Indian out of the American Indian Center in Chicago and said, you know, what's this all about? And, you know, the guy said, oh, it's just racism. And that, you know, that was the soundbite that appeared on the 10 o'clock news that, you know, millions and millions and millions of Americans saw that night on the ABC News. So, it, and and the, the, the media, it, we, I never learned about treaty rights when I was in school. Civics class, you got your local government, you got your state government, you got your federal government. You got your three units, you know, the three branches of government. Never anything about tribal sovereignty. So now we have these journalists going into communities, don't have any concept of treaties, of sovereignty, of self-determination. They're being fed material from these well-oiled anti-treaty groups. They're getting sound bites from the governor and state agencies who are worried about protecting their, their turf and concerned about how this might affect state sovereignty. And so, you know, we, we, this is why the media coverage was so bad in those early days.